The old karate masters could use their full body as a human weapon. But most of us are not karate masters. Some techniques require years, maybe even decades of conditioning and hardening your body, making your arms and legs as strong as iron. And unless you have an iron body, those techniques are just not gonna work for you. So in today's video, I'm just gonna show you my top three useless karate techniques unless you're a karate master, of course. Check it out. Useless technique number one is called nukite in Japanese, and it looks like this. Just form your hand into a spear and thrust it against your opponent. Now, I don't have a problem with the classical finger jab. In fact, that was one of Bruce Lee's favorite techniques. Imagine just throwing up your hand like this towards the opponent's eye. Works great because it's a long range weapon that you can then combine with other movements. And Bruce Lee was all about effective stuff, right? However, the Nukita in the classical karate fashion just requires so much training to make use of. I mean, just try using it for yourself right now on your hand like this. It already hurts my fingers. So imagine an aggressive attacker coming at you and in full force, you gotta thrust through his ribs and rip his heart out. You're just not gonna be able to pull it off unless you do what the old masters did. See, they had this bucket full of sand and they would thrust down into this bucket to make their fingers strong like a spear. And then they would gradually shift that sand into pebbles. And then they would shift that into small stones and so on until their hands were literally hard as rocks. Otherwise, you're just probably gonna break your fingers. So unless you wanna spend years hardening your fingertips, just stick to Bruce Lee's finger jab, all right? <laughs> Useless technique number two. This movement is known as shoken or ipponken in Japanese. And it looks like this either with the thumb on top or the thumb behind your index finger. And then the idea is that you actually hit with this tiny knuckle on your opponent's soft tissue parts. So you don't wanna hit anything hard, like a, a skull or a bone, right? Fun side note, when I recently went to China to trace the roots of karate, I learned this same technique from a white crane kung fu master, and apparently the Chinese translation of this fist formation is date fist, because he said it looks like a date, and then he chewed on his own finger, which was kind of nasty. However, in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate, they call it the tiger tooth because it kind of resembles the tiger's tooth, right? But no matter what you call it, one thing remains. You're not gonna be able to use it in a real fight. I mean, let's say somebody attacks me and I could stab them into the liver using my ippon ken. Well, in that case, I would just rather form a classic regular fist and go for that gut punch with a uppercut like any boxer would do, which is super simple and effective for anyone to do. And it doesn't involve the risk of breaking your fingers. The old masters couldn't use this either without years of conditioning their hand against the makiwara, the classical striking pose that you see in traditional karate dojos. In fact, one of the greatest karate fighters in history, Sensei Motobu Choki, was famous for using this type of attack in many of his street fights that went down in the Tsuji, the red light district in Okinawa. But just like the other karate legends, he had to spend years hardening his fist first. Otherwise, you're just gonna break your hand. I don't know about you, but I just frankly don't have the time or patience required to condition my hands to such a degree that I could use either this or the previous fist formation in a real fight. And that's why it's useless for me. Which brings me to the third and last of the useless karate techniques. It's known as Naka Daka Ken. Just look at that beautiful fist formation. Completely useless, but really cool, right? I mean, just imagine defeating somebody with this knuckle. How badass would that be? And also, almost impossible. Again, just try using this on your own hand. Sure, it might feel okay, 
until you realize that in order to actually accurately hit something with this knuckle, you need to have a sort of bend in your wrist, which means that you can't hit with a straight wrist because if my wrist is straight, then this knuckle points down and that just makes it impractical. So in order to actually use this fist, I would have to have a slight bend in my wrist, which means that it's super easy to sprain or maybe even break your wrist if you actually want to use this with full force. But maybe the Nakadaka Ken is not meant to be used in this manner. Maybe it should be used in this manner, as if you're striking down on something. And sure, that might work. But in nine times out of 10, I would probably just want to use a classical hammer fist instead, which doesn't require this weird dexterity and all those years of hardening that the Naka Daka Ken would require. Now, some people argue that this is actually not meant for punching or thrusting, but actually for pressing into different cavities and anatomical weak points of the human body. But again, I would rather just slam a hammer fist or even my whole forearm into somebody's neck than try to just push different weird knuckle parts into their throat. Because I don't know about you, but in the heat of the moment, in a real fight, it's hard to pinpoint those deadly Q-sho, those vital spots, right? By using something that is less granular, like let's say my whole fist, I might end up hitting five of those deadly spots instead of just one. So that's even more effective, right? Karate was created during a time in history when people had more time to dedicate to forging an iron body. Today, we're probably too weak anyway, because life was hard back then. A little bit of pain was not a problem. I don't know about you, but I'm a wuss. I like being comfy. I don't like hardening different weird fist formations in order to actually defend myself in a real life situation. I would rather use the bread and butter of karate, which is my classical fist, my forearms, and maybe even my legs. Speaking of legs, let me give you a fourth bonus. Have a look at my foot. You see that? Imagine I'm kicking you with my big toe and then I could use the other toe to reinforce that foot formation. In Japanese, we call it a sokusen or a tsumasaki geri, a tiptoe kick. And that was actually the main way that the old karate masters would kick people because again, they could hit those anatomically weak structures of the human body, those vital spots that could hopefully knock out the opponent with one single blow. In modern times, we usually kick with the ball of the foot instead. That's that part, ah, oh, cramps in my leg. Which is way less dangerous for the opponent, but also for you unless you've spent years hardening your toes. But the funny part is, the tiptoe kick might actually be useful if you're wearing shoes, because then it just makes sense to kick with the tip of your shoe. But back in the old days, the karate masters didn't have our modern shoe technology, so obviously they had to spend decades hardening their toes to be able to use the tiptoe kick. And I'm sure it really hurt if it actually hit somebody. Anyway, I've already said too much because now I wanna hear from you. What do you think is the most useful karate technique? Leave a comment and let me know, and then check out some of my other videos if you wanna learn more about the practical application of karate's classical self-defense techniques, because I think you're really gonna find something that you like. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.